All right, there's a few things I want to clear up from the last episode of Setup Wars. First of all, do you guys really think that I don't know the difference between Pokemon and DBZ? I was surprised at how many people actually thought I was serious when, um, well, play the clip. You'll see what I'm talking about. Let's relax a little bit and check out his gaming room. It's obvious just by glancing around, he's a big fan of Pokemon. Now there was a car model on a setup and I called it a Charger instead of a Camaro. <laughs> I was dumb there because I should have realized the difference. So I'll take the heat for that. But for the Pokemon and DBZ, come on guys, seriously. Anyways, I just wanted to clear that up. But anyways, welcome to Setup Wars episode 153, where you submit your desk setup to get featured on the show. If you guys want to participate, make sure to watch the video link below. But with that said, let the Pokemon Wars begin. <laughs> If you guys want to find the best deals on tech, make sure to check out dealsource.tech. We have a team of ambassadors constantly searching the internet and uploading the best deals multiple times a day across the US, UK, Canada, and even Germany. Anything from PC parts to TVs, even Windows CD keys, you will find them all on dealsource.tech. Check out the link below if you're interested. Kicking off the episode is Emil, who was on the show over a year ago from episode 104, which he actually ended up winning an ultrawide monitor from the LG ultrawide competition. So congrats once again, dude. His setup actually changed a lot since episode 104, and it looks like he added a secondary setup on the other wall, but we'll get to that in a bit. So his main setup is still rocking the custom made desk with a backboard and I just love how he kept everything mounted against it. It just looks so much cleaner against the backboard than on the actual surface of the desk. I'm also happy to see that he kept the ultra ride from the competition instead of selling it like some other people out there. He's also still using the K55 keyboard and the M65 mouse, which he drilled a hole for. Uh, some of the other stuff he has on the desk are his Surface Pro 3 tablet, we got his phone, and on the left side is a tray holding his watches and some other miscellaneous things like the remote for the RGB strips. The biggest addition to the setup are those Polk audio subs, which have been painted red and mounted against the backboard. Speaking of audio, it looks like he's added a pair of headphones to his collection, so now he has a total of three hanging from the backboard. And the last thing hanging from the backboard is the Beast PC, which he upgraded since last time. He upgraded from an FX8350 to a Ryzen 1700X, and he even upgraded the GPU from an RX470 to a GTX 1080. He also went from air-cooled to a liquid-cooled system, and the red carbon fiber skins on the GPU and power supply are also a nice touch. But overall, a very solid upgrade from before. So this entire setup is actually used for productivity mainly, since he doesn't like gaming on the ultra-wide, while the other setup is for gaming. It's rocking a 25-inch Alienware monitor, the Corsair K65 keyboard, and the Logitech G900 mouse. The desk is pretty much mounted against the wall using a bracket and the other side is being supported by a cubby. The audio setup is also pretty simple, he's using the Corsair Void Gaming headset and a Blue Yeti microphone. Now the cool thing about this setup is that it doesn't have a PC. The monitor is actually hooked up to the PC from the main setup. And the cable management is excellent. He used a wall raceway to route the cables towards the main setup. Excellent job. Now since he has a giant backboard, he can easily hide the cables under there, and I also like that he has a set of cables ready for charging next to the tablet. Last but not least, we have his console gaming setup on the other side of his room, and he pretty much uses this to play on his Xbox One X or the PS4 Slim, which are both painted in red to match the aesthetics of his other two setups. But he also uses it to stream games and watch content. He did build a PC just for this setup as well, and it's packing the i5-3550K and an EVGA GTX 1060. The PC is hooked up to his 50-inch 4K TV from Samsung and his other monitor next to his bed, which I think is a clever modification. He can just chill in his bed while watching videos, it's very convenient. The awesome backboard and the fact that he's using the same PC for two setups and even small things like adding charging ports inside his desk is what makes this setup unique and stand out from the rest. Email, you have taken an already awesome setup and you made it better with some awesome upgrades. Excellent work and thank you for entering. Frankie, all the way from France, is up next with a bold triple monitor setup and he's got quite the list of occupations. He's a geek father, husband, archer, gamer, RC, biker, and of course, a tired man. 
The setup's purpose is gaming, homeworking, which he is a data center system architect, and watching his new favorite YouTube channel. I'm guessing that's me. He's walking three 24-inch Samsung monitors that are hooked up against the wall, and at first glance, I thought he ran the cables through the wall, but he actually bundled them together and hooked them to a power strip behind the monitor. Now, he did run the power strip cable through the wall and out underneath the drawer where his PC is. It also looks like he routed the USB hub and the cables for both the keyboard and mouse through the wall and into the PC on the other side. Very clean cable management. Speaking of the keyboards and mouse, he's using the GA10 Orion keyboard and the G300S gaming mouse, both from Logitech. Uh, other than that, he's got two Gallardo models sitting on the desk. Overall, he kept the surface organized and very minimal. I do like that he kept things symmetrical. The wall shelves are spaced out perfectly, along with the bookshelf speakers and the skull in the middle holding the G433 headset. Finally, the PC powering the setup is equipped with a Ryzen 1600X. We got 8 gigs of RAM and the Sapphire R9 280. The setup kind of has a dark side vibe to it, but I like that he wasn't afraid to give it some contrast by throwing in some white shelves and the drawers. Overall, it's a very clean and straightforward triple modern setup. Thank you, Frankie, for entering. Speaking of clean setups, check out this Assassin's Creed inspired setup by Johannes from Norway. Now this setup is mainly used for gaming, however he does use it for programming and schoolwork as well. Oh, fun fact by the way, Johannes also won an ultra wide monitor from one of my competitions and he still uses it till today. That's actually two people who won ultra wide monitors from previous competitions that are in the same episode and I promise to you guys that this was not planned, it just happened. So this is the 34 inch UM69G, which has a 75 Hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, and an AMD FreeSync. It's always nice to see that they kept the prize and they're still using it even till today. Now he does have a side monitor from BenQ, which is sitting on a custom riser. And speaking of custom work, the risers for his desk are also custom made. They are 3D printed cubes with the Assassin's Creed logo on them. The same logo can be found on the front of his PC. You guys probably recall seeing something similar from the Wolverine setup I did a few years back and also season one of Setup Makeover. For peripherals, he's using the Logitech G710 Plus keyboard and the MX Master 2 wireless mouse. That custom paint job on the keyboard with the mixture of white and red keycaps are very nice. And I just noticed that the cutout he made on his mouse pad for the Assassin's Creed logo, that's very clever. For audio, he's rocking Creative Inspire A60 speakers and the Logitech G933 headset. I definitely think that Johannes did an excellent job on balancing the colors over here. There isn't one color that's dominant, and he spread it evenly across the setup with great contrast. Another thing he did great on is the cable management. He's using a Signum rack, but unlike most people just tossing the wires on there, he actually kept it organized. He also used some cable clips to keep the wires from hanging down, and added a USB hub in the front for easy access. The PC powering all of this has a 6600K, an interesting 24 gigs of RAM, and the MSI GTX 1070. Although I don't agree with the power supply orientation, I do like the back plate that he made and painted himself for the GPU. This is a really nice Assassin's Creed inspired setup, and I think Johannes did an excellent job with the custom work and the color scheme. Thank you for entering. Coming in at number four is Julius from Poland and his setup for programming, gaming, and watching movies. The massive wall-mounted desk was custom made by himself and it's actually where his PC is. It's located on the left side in his drawer. If he ever needs to swap parts out or clean it, all he has to do is pull it out. Talk about convenience. It's rocking an AMD 7850K and an old R7 series GPU, so it's a little outdated. I'm actually curious what games he's able to play with these specs. I do love the custom hardware monitor display that he installed in the drawer, which is super convenient in checking out the temps, but also adjusting it on the fly if he ever needs to. Very nice. Now he is using a single monitor, however he does have a 55 inch OLED TV up top from LG that he uses for watching videos and gaming on his Xbox One X. It looks like the only audio source he has are the edifier speakers that are mounted on the wall. Judging by the wireless keyboard and mouse, this setup is mostly used for productivity. And actually, now that I think about it, I think he meant that he uses this setup for console gaming and not PC gaming, which actually makes more sense now. Cable management is pretty much flawless. He did build a rack underneath the desk, which holds up all the cables and the power strips for the setup and keeps it nice and hidden away from sight. A very nice custom built setup by Julius. Thank you for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Nate and his black and red setup that he uses for gaming, streaming, and CAD. 
Nate is also an avid watcher of my channel and this setup was inspired from watching Setup Wars over a year now. In fact, here is the evolution from his setup since the beginning. As you guys can see, he made some nice upgrades along the process. So he's rocking two different monitors that are mounted against the desk and below that we got the Corsair K55 RGB keyboard and the Razer Naga Chroma mouse. I'm actually very glad that you drilled a hole in the desk for cable management. It looks very clean. Speaking of cable management, he did an excellent job across the setup. The routing is some of the cleanest I have seen in a long time. It looks very organized and I could definitely tell he spent some time on this. He used a bunch of cable clips to help with the routing and he even has a J-channel raceway holding up majority of the cables. He mounted a power strip and the power brick for the monitor underneath here as well. Even the cables behind the setup and the PC are managed beautifully. Overall fantastic job, I'm very proud of you Nate. I especially love the fact that he took my advice from Setup Wars and installed a pencil drawer underneath the desk for additional storage. Great choice. For audio, he's using a pair of Logitech Z333 speakers, HyperX Cloud 2 gaming headset that's hanging underneath the desk, and we also got a Blue Yeti microphone hooked up on the right side of the desk. For console gaming, he does have an Xbox One with a controller charging stand. However, the system powering the setup is a custom PC equipped with a 7700K, 16 gigs of RAM, and the almighty Strix 1080 from ASUS. I do like the color scheme of the setup. It's mostly black with subtle red accents, which is what I actually prefer. I see a lot of black and red setups with a 50-50 split between each color, and I honestly get tired of seeing it, but I think that Nate did an awesome job keeping the red very minimum here. Of course, we can't ignore his love for Funko Pops. He has an entire collection on the top shelf dedicated to showing them off, alongside a few that are scattered around his setup. It always makes me happy seeing awesome setups like these that are inspired from Setup Wars. Thank you, Nate, for entering. And that does it for this episode of Setup Wars. Make sure you guys comment below on who you think has the best desk setup. I'll announce the winners on my Twitter and Instagram accounts. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, drop a like if you enjoy the series, dislike if you don't, and I will see you in the next video.